Sandra here from Carcraft Auto Detailing in Melbourne. Today's video is a follow up on the interior cleaning and protection products video I did. Today, looking at the tools, accessories and equipment I use to detail car interiors. As I work predominantly as a mobile detailer, I'm limited to the amount of equipment I can stock and carry in my van. So, it's really important for me to invest in tools that are both compact and capable of doing several tasks. Just as important is organisation. Having a setup where everything has its place, is easily accessible and flows with my detailing procedures makes all the difference. I absolutely hate clutter and mess and I'm always looking at ways to simplify and limit the products I stock and carry. Plus, rolling up in a dirty messy vehicle is never going to make a good first impression with a client. The advancements in tools today have drastically changed the way I detail interiors, not only making the process faster, but allowing me to achieve far better results and honestly I just couldn't imagine having to do without some of these tools today. So let's have a look at some of these products, starting with cleaning brushes I use. For effective carpet cleaning, you really need stiff nylon brushes. I tend to use three carpet brushes for most cars. I'm a top handle brush for all flat accessible areas, as this gives you the best downwards pressure, to a long handle brush for areas like under driver pedals and seats, to a more narrow long handle brush for tighter areas like in between seats and center consoles. I found it's best not to overthink or overpay for these stiff brushes as 9 times out of 10 they last forever and are readily available at hardware stores for $5 to $10 each. Next up are the brushes I use for leather, vinyl, fabrics and plastic. They are softer nylon or animal hair bristles, some with feathered ends. My favourite car seat cleaning brush is the Viking upholstery brush. With a perfect balance of stiffness and softness, it's extremely effective while still being safe on my surfaces. It fits nicely in my hand and my first one lasted almost two years. And at $12 a pop, it's a bargain. For more delicate seats and older leather and vinyl, I use this leather shoe style brush. With very soft horsehair bristles, it takes a little more work to be effective but it's still capable and extremely safe on most materials. You can find these everywhere in department stores, usually for under $10. For getting in and around tighter areas and seams, I like to have a thinner, longer handled soft nylon brush. Again, I don't really overthink it, they're only a few bucks each and available everywhere. Then there's the Swiss Vax interior brush. This also works great as a dusting aid when you're vacuuming, as well as an all round interior brush for dash, consoles, door cards and headliners. It's very gentle with feathered bristles and great at storing the product for a nice foaming action. It's not all that durable, lasting me two to three months, and at about $15 to $20 each, not all that cheap, but I do continue to buy it as it's a great versatile brush with a safe plastic housing. I also really like these HD brushes for their thinness that can access areas the Swiss Vax can't. And I also like them for applying dressings in areas that can't fit an applicator pad. They can however shed a little at first, and the metal casing isn't the best idea, but some gaffer tape sorts that out. Durability is good and pricing is great at about $6 to $8 each. On to more specialty brushes, like this makeup one, which is fantastic at dusting and picking up fine particles, especially on sensitive surfaces like display screens. And these wheel woolly brushes that range from soft steel to stiff and soft nylon bristles are very handy for spot cleaning action in tight areas. And just quickly, this extended toothbrush, as well as these dog toothbrushes and this super thin makeup brush are all great to have and pull out for those tight areas that 99% of brushes are too big for. Cotton buds dipped in all-purpose cleaner can be great for tackling greasy air vents and thin contours of cup holders and storage compartments. Likewise, wooden skewers wrapped in a microfiber cloth with some all-purpose cleaner are also very effective. Having a couple of plastic scrapers for chewing gum and built up gunk is also a must for certain situations. Now onto cleaning and dressing pads. 
These grey homeware brand pads are my most used of all. They have a microfiber side for mold cleaning and wipe downs and a more aggressive non-scratch side for heavy cleaning that's a step up on my interior brushes. These are only a dollar each at Bunnings Warehouse and last for months on end. Also great are these white non-scratch pads from Masters. They actually come in a larger pad that I cut into three smaller ones. Completely safe on most surfaces, they have a great foaming action but are not quite as durable as the grey pads and also a little more expensive. For more intensive cleaning on hard plastics, these common green scourers are very effective at removing embedded marks and rubber transfer on door kick plates, but don't go using them on softer or scratch prone materials. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. Sorry, that was probably uncalled for. But I'm referring to magic sponges. I love these things. Great for cleaning the front windscreens and any non tinted glass. Fantastic for stain mark and ink removal on hard surfaces but avoid them on fabrics and leather as they will strip the surface and always use them damp. They can be as little as a dollar or two if you buy them in packs, aren't very durable but make up points in their extreme effectiveness. For all-in-one interior cleaner dressings, I prefer using microfiber applicators as they tend to have a better cleaning action than foam. These white large ones from HD lint like crazy when new but a wash sort set out and generally, they're good for about a dozen uses before they wear and become stiff. HD's blue microfiber pads are far better with less lint and greater lifespan, both around $4 each. The Meguiar's Evenco pads are still the best in my opinion, and also my favorite hand polishing pads, but they are twice the price of the HD ones. When applying dressings, I still like using foam pads as there is no linting issues and they tend to glide and provide more even finishes. I get these yellow discs from an auto body shop for about $1.50 each and they last a month or two. The Meguiar's ones again are far more durable but at $5 each, also quite expensive for a piece of cut foam. I'm liking these HD ones which are more of a balance in price and quality. Now onto what I call Mission Impossible, pet hair removal. I never guarantee 100% pet hair removal as you could easily spend an entire day chasing that goal. 85-95% to 95 is as realistic and appropriate as I get. The most effective tool I've found is the pet hair removal stone. Used in a single direction, sweeping motions, it works great, lasts forever and at $15 each is a bargain. Also effective are these rubber brushes that I use along edges and tighter areas that the stone can't access or may damage surrounding surfaces. Latex and nitrile gloves are also effective in gathering pet hair and loose fibres as well as a common limb roller that I also use as a final inspection tool to pick up particles. Although Stoner's glass reach tool may look gimmicky, it's actually very handy and effective for hard to reach front and rear windscreens and those tight recessed areas where you can't get your hand in. At about $25 or so, it's well worth the investment. A must have tool, especially for dark interiors or low lighting situations, is a headlamp. I've got this Coast Torch from Bunnings for about $70. It's got an adjustable beam, which is also great for checking paint defects, and a tilt function with a very decent 270 lumens. And trust me, if the interior looks great under this light, it'll look immaculate under normal lighting. Safety is something many of us tend to dismiss, but the general rule is, if it's on you, it's in you. So wearing gloves when possible is important, and if you wouldn't drink it, you shouldn't breathe it in. So a face mask can really limit the amount of chemicals you ingest, as well as protective glasses that can reduce irritation and eliminate potential hazards. And before we have a look at powered equipment, I want to cover these great organisation and time saving products. Firstly is a bucket caddy. I have one of these for both my interior products and tools, as well as one for my tyre wheel and engine cleaning equipment. I absolutely love them, especially for mobile detailing, as they save me time and space. And at about $25 each, what more can I say? 
I'm sure many of you have heard of the Detailers Helper, and Rupes makes their own version as well, which are great tools, however, it doesn't really work for interiors, as I find it too bulky and annoying. This belt, however, works great. I got it as part of a car vinyl wrap course I did, so I'm not really sure on price or availability, but I use it on every interior detail I do, and love it. It fits all my brushes and pads, and a couple of microfiber cloths, and keeps them all handy as I need them, without being too bulky or in the way. I covered these rotary and DA brushes in a previous video, but briefly, they are great for quickly breaking down stubborn stains on carpets and upholstery, which I then use my extractor or a microfiber cloth to clean up the surface. The Rupert's Nano brushes are great for tighter areas and also exterior trims like grills, bumpers and headlights with both stiffer nylon and softer horsehair brushes. On to my Nomadic George. This is a fantastic dry vacuum with double dust particle filtration and twin motors capable of doing over 30 cars on a single bag. It's also a bagless wet and dry vac with a 12 litre waste reservoir and thirdly, it's a very capable carpet and fabric extractor, especially when used with hot water. It has character, looks great, and at about $800, which includes all the attachments, it's a real gem. Next is my Echo Pro 3000 steamer by Vaporetto. With a beefy five bar of pressure, three litre boiler, and almost an hour of continuous steam, it's a brilliant little Italian. Whereas extractors excel on porous materials like carpet and fabric, pulling dirt up and out from within, steamers work best on surface stains and harder non-porous materials. The combination of steam and high pressure is what makes them so effective, as well as their ability to sanitize and kill bacteria without the use of chemicals. Also, at about $800, this is a little workhorse that has never missed a beat. Last, but by no means least, is the Z020 Tornador Black. This is an air tool that has changed the way I detail, both interiors and exteriors. It uses high speed rotating end that expels pressurized air, as well as your choice of cleaning liquid. Which, in practical terms, means that it's able to lift and break down dirt that would otherwise need to be scrubbed out with a brush or pad. This tool can save me up to an hour on interiors, which in my world is huge. They also use it for engine bay cleaning, tyres, and cleaning certain exterior trims. My newest addition to the Tornador is the Velocity Vac, which now enables this tool to both break down dirt and grime, and extract it out with a vacuum attached to it. Far better than Pneumatic George can alone, but don't tell him that. It's just a beast of a tool that keeps on getting better and better. At about $200, it's a steal, but you do need a decent air compressor to make the most of it. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Wait, have you subscribed yet? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.